One of the goals of the T2 Tile project is, to, well, the main goal is to build a, a hardware implementation for the movable feast machine, a particular kind of architecture. And one of the most important things that most basic beginning things that the movable feast machine has to provide is large object motion, where it depends on exactly what large, what object, and what motion means. But let's take a couple of minutes to marinate in this. reflecting off of the uh, tiles. That may not look like much yet, but uh, that makes me really excited. To me, that feels full of potential. So, hey, folks, it's T Tuesday, 3122. These were the goals from last time. I'm just going to, instead of going through them in this order, I'm just going to do kind of a news report because there's all kinds of things going on. This may take a little bit longer than I tried to say for myself, but, you know, I'm going to let the casual YouTube audience go. Uh, uh, is, if there's content that I want to uh, report to you, I'm going to report to you. A and, you know, you are here. I am here. That's what matters. So, okay, let's get into it. Uh, uh, number one, Ulam 5, the latest version of the programming language designed for the movable feast machine to run on the T2 tiles, is finally released. The previous uh, Ulam 4 was released in 2018. Uh, um, Ulam 5 was supposed to be uh, come out a mm, couple of years ago or a year and a half ago. Anyway, uh, it is now out. Uh, Elena is the, uh, the principal... Uh, uh, author of, of the Ulam compiler and, and made all this happen. There's a tremendous amount of new stuff. Uh, uh, and we got all the way to have Ubuntu packages. Uh, not for everything uh, in particular, only for 64-bit architectures, not for 32-bit architectures. Does anybody care about 32-bit architectures anymore? I mean, I wanted to... It's it, it, the packages aren't supporting 32-bit for a really stupid reason, but there's no end of stupid reasons once one starts getting into dealing with this stuff, and I just couldn't go far enough. But, you know, I will show you. Uh, uh, all right, so, you know, Monday. This is, you know, yesterday I was... <laughs> finally settling down to this because I hate doing it. Uh, uh, so it was like, okay, figure out what I need and then go start springing the bear traps uh, uh, and, you know, just fail, 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 uh, and then eventually get to a, a fairly, you know, this piece of software has to be newer than this version. That piece of software has to be older than that version. It was like, there's no solution. And so like, can I go all the way back to 2016 era, you know, like 
<laughs> before America went to hell. Uh, um, uh, to get ancient software. So 2.16.04, that's an Ubuntu distribution from 2016. Can we make a VM and uh, run it there? And and that eventually started to work. And then I started getting a higher class of errors. Um, and eventually I actually got far enough that I could start sending packages up to Canonical. That's the company that uh, does Ubuntu. And when you're contributing packages for a personal package archive, you send the source code up to them and they build it on their build farm. And if they don't like it, it doesn't. if it doesn't build, they don't like it. And, you know, wasn't getting it to build, failed here. The clock just keeps spinning. But by like eight o'clock last night, uh, I got everything, the 64-bit builds finally working. And you know, okay, I will take it. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and just to show how easy it is, now that we have packages, I'm, I'm gonna try to do a, a, a demo on a VM because you know, I've actually become quite a bit more competent uh, with modern VM stuff. They've come a long way. All right, so this is a brand new Ubuntu 2204. That's the most recent uh, long-term thing. I'm going to see if I can uh, connect to the personal package archive, install Ulam, and run a program while we watch. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Uh, okay, so no, I do not want to connect my online accounts. No, I do not want to set up live patch. Um, no, I do not want to send system info about this. Uh, uh, virtual machine that I am about to toss uh, immediately. Okay, I'm ready to go. All right, so I need a terminal. Terminal, okay. And now I gotta do the magic command, which I have pre-typed over here so that if I can, can I paste it? No, I cannot paste it. sudo add apt repository ppa actually mfm. Uh, okay, and the password for me here I blow it. I think I blew it. Ooh. Well. <laughs> so, oh, is it lowercase? I think it's lowercase. Maybe it's lower. I don't think it's really lowercase. Oh. Repository. Yeah. Jammy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Press enter. Uh, uh. Okay. All right, so theoretically that now made, all right, so now I don't actually, software, right? Okay. So if I start this up um, and I type, I search for Ulam, uh, uh, it's taken for, oh, great. <laughs> uh, uh, uh huh, yeah, I, I really, I really need the application ratings. All right, uh, come on. How do I search? Ulam. No application found. All right. Ah, well, uh, how about we do this? Uh, Synaptic. See, I don't, I don't, I don't use this. I, I use Synaptic because uh, uh, it's the old one. I guess I'm going to pretend it means it's done. So now can I run synaptic? All right. That's, uh, oh dear. I knew this was a bad idea. That's why I chose to do it anyway. Yeah, uh, all right. So now, come on. Yeah. Uh, there it is. Mark for installation. Uh, it's going to mark a bunch of other stuff. Uh, this is probably going to take quite a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Uh, uh, I wonder if I should just go. 
maybe uh yeah yeah what if i uh go back to other stuff and then we'll come back to that that's how easy this though is uh, uh all right in other topics uh, um one of my goals for this time was to learn more about self-publishing so that uh, I might be able to get this little science fiction story, Search Quiet Wake, out to the world and just to try to, you know, be able to speak in my own voice. Whether anybody wants to hear it, I don't have to convince a publisher or an editor first to get it out there. If, it, if I can find an audience, I can find an audience directly. I was looking, you know, there's this Amazon's got a Kindle Direct Publishing thing. Uh, uh, and then, you know, this is great. Uh, Rin. Uh, in the Discord, sorry to bug, saw in your last video, think of an independent publisher, you know, experience might want to discuss. Yes, that's exactly what I wanted. Uh, so we had a, a bunch of interactions and, you know, it was great, you know, from someone who'd actually done it. Uh, uh, so I learned no need to sign up for a kin Kindle Direct Publishing. I should sign up for an Ingram Spark account. Yes, yes, yes. Rin even made a, a care package for me with a bunch of files for, you know, for uh, Linux, you know, for Ubuntu and, well, whatever, uh, for uh, latex files, which is what I would like to use and so forth. Uh, I'm working my way through the care package, getting it working on my thing. I've still got problems. That's currently on, on my desk to, to figure out. And, you know, Rin, thank you so much. It felt like, you know, the hardest part of the ramp is when you need a, a little help get you the farthest the quickest yay uh, uh, all right uh can we go back to our how is our demo doing all right changes apply uh, um and now we're, we'll get out of this and we ought to be able to just type mfms look at that now here's a trick uh mfms dash dash cpp demos these are the ancient ancient look at all that these are the ancient ancient elements that were written oh man i don't know how many years ago uh even before ulam existed uh we've managed to keep them still running um and you know we can run the procedural city generation demo uh right now boom there we are uh um that you know is one of the more popular videos <laughs> over on the dave ackley channel because you know it's quite a bit of fun to watch won't take any more time now. Ulam 5 packages are available. All of this stuff has been pushed to master uh, for GitHub folks. Finally, I am sorry it took so long. All right, let's uh, let's stop the city here. Uh, uh, all right, so in other news, uh, you know, I have, I have so many things that seem like they're sort of separate branches, but in my mind, they all come together. And I'm hoping they will all come together while I'm still able to explain why they do fit together. But there's the uh, Hyperspace Academy series of lectures over on the Dave Ackley channel, of which the most recent one, We Are Coders, uh, uh, is, is beginning to put out what I think is a kind of compelling, if you're a nerd, uh, um, philosophy of life uh, sort of uh, where the idea is a large part of it it's about code design it's about api and program design it's not about like what is true it's not about what the neurons force on you or physics force on you it's about choices it's about what architectural design how do you want to organize your programs your hardware software system to do good things and the suggestion is is that organizing it around the fact that number one first up we are coders is a useful productive way that unfolds uh, an effective way and can unfold in an effective way and part of that is this idea of the self image it's uh, that came out and I talked about it right so we can view ourselves we can view programmable machinery as being consisting of four processes input sequence judge and output and that's what the uh, we are coders video uh, over on the direct channel was about I had these you know symbols for each one input arrow in output arrow out, sequence arrow going around in the same place, and judge being good or bad, up or down, that sort of thing. And those four symbols uh, I smush together into the self symbol. You know, there's the input, there's the output over there, here's the sequence up here, and there's the judge, uh, good and bad. And, you know, I've, <clears throat> I've made uh, little uh, printed versions. We've got, you know, uh, wine charms that we 
you know, these things. But the fantasy is the, uh, the Hyperspace Academy uh, uh, uses the cell symbol all over the place. It, it's a shorthand for a computer architecture, a programmable architecture. Not that, again, is right or wrong, but one that we can choose. We can say, I'm going to look at things as being organized in terms of input, output, sequence, and judgments. And they can control each other in different kinds of ways, and we get all kinds of different machinery by how each of those processes processes impacts the other ones. And so I wanted to get it in as many ways as possible. I always kind of fantasized about having sort of like an ancient, you know, Inca or Stonehenge stone version of the thing. And, you know, again, uh, the introductions channel, uh, which uh, Andrew, I think, made on the Discord uh, a week or two ago, uh, uh, has been really great. And lots of people have introduced themselves, and it's been really interesting to see it. And so the scoundrel M showed up and said, you know, they're an amateur computer graphics art artist, and, you know, they know about Blender and so forth. And I have gotten destroyed by Blender, so I started talking to the scoundrel M. And look at this. <laughs> this is, a, you know, a work in progress, a first cut of a, uh, you know, stone monolith. Uh, of the uh, self symbol and you know it, this is also now on, on my on my desk I'm to find some reference stones and stuff like that that uh, to keep working on it but already you know thank you the scoundrel M uh, and thank you everybody who participates in the discord or you know participates in any way it really really helps me now research and development what we saw in the opening video Low density mobile grid, LDMG, that's my new thing. And so just to back it, to introduce it for a minute. So, you know, in the 12 steps to robust, one of the steps is like uh, step number three. I mean, it's really basic. Uh, uh, build bottom up uh, uh, has been echoing in my mind a lot. And the, you know, when I would design, like when I was designing the plates, I was filling space with plate, solid plate, and the plate could overwrite other plate and so forth, but it was hogging everything. And the build bottom up notion was, well, one of them was, what if it's about leaving empty space? What if it's about not being committed and saying, you know, I don't care. I, I mean, I, I need these things and I will deal with these things and I won't even look at the rest of the space. And that makes it a lower order problem and it makes everybody else that has to deal with it can know that and say, you know, I, as long as I can deftly zip in and here and avoid the things that it cares about, I know it will work. Now, um, what if it's about empty space? And that led me to the idea of this hard cell that you know we've seen over the last two updates the sort of blobby membrane gas cloud slash soft cell versions what if i, I said you know and, and i and i really did like that but once again this is the same move what if we wanted to focus on building a, a grid that number one can move and number two it's as low density as possible it leaves as much empty for other purposes as it can. And I got to hard sell three. So, you know, here is the event window. Uh, uh, the uh, guy that's having the event is always in the middle. He, uh, he thinks he's the center of the universe and he can look out to distance four all the way around. Uh, um, and so the idea of hard sell three is that we're going to have another, we're going to have a hard sell three at distance three in each of the four directions. And we're just going to keep tiling space until we get to however big the overall grid wishes to be. Uh, um, and, you know, so if we, if we do this, I mean, we could have said, uh, put it out at distance four, but when I started working it all through, in particular, the needs of being mobile, uh, uh, distance three kind of seemed to be the sweet spot. And when you work it out, you think about it, okay, well, what that really means is in every three by three collection of sites, there's one hard cell three, and the other eight sites are empty. One of nine occupied, eight of nine empty. 88.8%, almost 89%. So here's the advertising slogan for hard cell three. Hard cell three is 89% nothing. <laughs> and that's a good thing because it means it's 89% of your potential, 89% of, you know, memory unused in effect, processing power unused for whatever you want, where you can now count on having a grid around you. And that's what we saw in the open events. Now, how does a grid actually move? A and this is another thing that really made me happy. Uh, uh, and this is why hard cell three is what works good and hard cell four would not do it, at least not this way. And the idea is, is that if we're supposed to go out three, we can look north, 
south, west, and east of all, each of our neighbors. So we've got a little uh, four, uh, you know, across here, across here, across there. So what can happen is, is you know, if one of them wants to, they're not going to send a packet. They're not going to send a message saying, I want to go north. Under the right circumstances, according to the hard sell three rules, they will just go north and that will tell everybody else a something. It's also a message and it's emotion. And that's the key to this idea of stigmergy that we see in nature all over the place. The termite mounds, classic example, that the termite mounds, the termites, they just do what they do. And in addition to getting things done, it's also a signal to other termites that the exact same time, the exact same motion, no extra work. Uh, uh, and that's what we do with hard cell three. So for example, if, if uh, the way we can tell is each hard cell has a hop count so that we can have a root and then we have hop counts increasing away from the root. So if this guy has got hops three, this guy's got hops three, the one in the center who's having the bent hops four, this one's got hop five uh, over there that's empty, then because these two have uh, threes, that means they're upstream, so we're gonna pay attention to them. Because this thing has hops bigger than the guy that's having a bent, that means they're downstream. And so the idea is, ooh, look at this. You know, this guy's in the center, this one has moved north relative to the three by three pitch. And over here, this guy has also moved north relative to the uh, resting position. And that sends a stigmergic message to the guy in the middle that he'd like to go north as long as going north would not cause him to lose sight of any of his downstreams. Now, in this case, there's nobody over there, so there's no problem. In this case, even if he moves north, the downstream guy will still be able to see him. In fact, it will look just like we have here. He'll see them one step up. So he can go ahead and move, and that's how it works. And finally, uh, um, so all of these things move by moving in their little cross-shaped neighborhoods around each of the four neighboring sites, plus the little four cross-cell neighborhood around the center. That's because we only we don't we we move you know north, south, east, west one square at a time, and that's what we saw. Uh, uh, and that means there are these pockets these uh, 16 sites that the code never needs to look at. It can move, it can preserve itself without caring about those in the least. Now, the way the code is written in a couple of cases, it does scan through that stuff because that's because I really hadn't figured it all out quite at that point. But this, I like this a lot. Uh, uh, you know, we could, we could put messages in there, we could put storage in there, and that storage would then look to the grid and say, ooh, I need to move to keep up. Uh, uh, as the grid moves, but then that's all it has to do. It doesn't have to worry about the bigger picture of motion or of uh, coordinating space. So that's it. Uh, did pretty well, uh, uh, considering we did a uh, <laughs> sort of busted live demo. So that's it for next time. Uh, uh, here are the goals. Uh, I want to announce the goal for <laughs> The project, the T2 tile project goal for 2022. It's June. <laughs> it's getting to be time. Uh, uh, and you know the real point is is that you know a two week cadence is is you know enough to certainly keep me not slacking off for more than a day or two after each T Tuesday update. And then it's like, all right, I got to get uh, something going again. Uh, but we need a, a slightly longer scale thing as well. And so six months is something that seems about right. Uh, I have an idea what that's going to be, but I want to flesh it out a little bit, make it more specific. So that'll be next time. I also want to take these hard cells and, you know, let them bounce off each other, let them reproduce, let them evolve even, you know, who knows. Uh, uh, we'll see how far we can get. And I want to take the uh, learning that I got from Rin and uh, get the Ingram Spark account and start moving all down the road there so that I could do, you know, maybe publish a little test book and find out how much it's going to cost me. Even though I, I want to do a little bit more work on Search Quiet Wake if I'm going to go final uh, uh, before I actually push that out there and then have some more fun. Uh, uh, it's been pretty good. Thank you so much uh, for coming, whether you're here live or you're watching uh, the videos later. I hope to see you next time.